So good morning, and uh, I also want to say some thanks to the organizers, volunteers, speakers, sponsors, and all of you, the attendees of Pi Texas, for making this possible. I'm really excited. This is my first keynote ever, um, so this is a, a pretty big thing for me. So we're all going to smile and clap and participate and be here, right? Awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm Ernest, uh, as Dustin said. I'm a software person living and working from Cleveland, Ohio. And since 2012, I've been a member of the Python Software Foundation's infrastructure team. Um, I'm excited to be serving as the chair for PyCon US 2018 in Cleveland, Ohio, which indeed you should attend. And outside of Python, I'm an avid taco enthusiast and hobbyist mechanic. Um, I'm also now addicted to Topo Chico. And uh, I have a question for the locals. Can you overdose on this, or is it? Is it just water? I'm not sure. Um, so today I'd like to share with you an overview of what goes on behind the scenes of the python.org domain. Um, so this is something generally uh, most folks who are using Python interact with on a daily basis, and maybe they're not sure. So I'm going to show three scenarios. And you should just raise your hand if you've done any of these three things in the last month or so. Maybe you've pip installed requests. Anybody? Excellent. Uh, maybe you decided to actually read the documentation instead of copying and pasting from our favorite website. Um, and you don't want to use 27, so go ahead and go to 36, and we're good now. Um, maybe you decided to go download the latest and greatest Python. Um, we have releases on a regular basis, and they're available at python.org. Anybody download Python recently? Excellent. So uh, whether or not you realize it, uh, every time you do one of those things, um, or many other uh, ancillary things in the community, you're interacting with the Python Software Foundation infrastructure. Um, so I really want to quickly run over two ways that I'm going to discuss the term infrastructure today. Uh, the first is the servers, non-user facing services that are supported by the Python Software Foundation's infrastructure team. And secondly, are like the codified processes and the user facing services and websites that support and connect our community. Um, this is a slide that you should take a picture of. It has Twitter handles. Um, <laughs> these are uh, all the folks that are involved uh, directly with the, the PSF infrastructure on the infrastructure staff mailing list. Um, so technically, it's a working group of the Python Software Foundation, and these are, these are its members. Um, so these names are the people who sort of quietly do work in the background to support mm -hmm. these services and try to make uh, our community uh, better through tech, I guess. Um, and these are some resources. If you're interested to learn more about any of this in the end, um, all of the infrastructure for the PSF is actually uh, online and available publicly. So you can check out some of these repositories to see how it comes together. If you want to connect with us or you want to like say, hey, I think something's wrong, uh, you can hop into the Python infra on Freenode or the infrastructure channel on the PSF Slack. So. Other than those three scenarios, there are many things that are supported by the PSF infrastructure, and we're going to just run through them. It's sort of a, a, a quick clip. Um, this one you're probably familiar with, www.python.org. Um, this has general, general information on the language. It has um, our PEPs, uh, the Python, Py, Python enhancement proposals index there. There's a job board, um, and lots of other links sort of out into the rest of uh, uh, our community. Uh, it also hosts like the minutes for the board. Um, and I'm trying to think anything else it does. There's many things. Oh, you can, you can execute real Python in that little box. I don't know if you've ever tried that. Um, docs.python.org, also a huge reference, reference spot for people who are actively using Python. Uh, PyPI.python.org, but don't use PyPI.python.org. Use PyPI.org. So this is the next generation Python package index. Uh, you can check it out. Um, it's usable for like browsing, searching, uh, finding links and such, um, but you can't like administer your packages through that. But for most for most use cases, you should be trying to use this. Help us help us make it better as we're progressing through it. Mail.python.org, sort of an undersung hero. Um, this is uh, primarily in support of the endless sea of mailing lists uh, that are used to coordinate Python development, working groups, projects, and sub communities within within the broader Python community. There's special interest groups for things like uh, distutils for packaging up your Python and sharing it, or sharing your ideas for the language. Um, trying to think of other really 
interesting mailing lists. Uh, user groups are, can have mailing lists to this and, and other things. And it also just supports uh, general communication uh, within, within the, the PSF and the community at large. There's the wiki. It's a treasure trove of information, new and old, uh, about the language, the ecosystem, the community, and the activities of the PSF. So there's, uh, it's also used like a landing spot for most of the working groups have their charters up there, et cetera. Uh, Bugs.python.org. So not everything is cherry. Uh, you're, you're occasionally going to find something that's wrong. Um, and so if you ever find something wrong with the core language, this is where you would go to um, report it. Is also where discussion happens for how that will be resolved, whether it will be backported, et cetera. Um, Buildbot.python.org. So Python is available on many platforms, and you, you need to test them on those platforms if you're gonna if you're gonna ship it. Um, so Buildbot is uh, administered in the PSM infrastructure, but all these builders are uh, sort of uh, dozens of computers around the world that have donated their time. Uh, PythonTest.net, easily the prettiest part of the Python Software Foundation's infrastructure. This is uh, a test test site so that unit tests, or I guess not unit tests, uh, but tests in the Python uh, in this Python implementations um, test suite that need to make a network call and test things like FTP or HTTP. We host things there. Um, and in the past, there's been uh, a, a, a common pattern of hosting our own version control repositories. So svn.python.org is where you get redirected to your hg.python.org, which is where you get redirected now to GitHub. Um, so, uh, so the other two are still up there for archival purposes to make them available, keep links online, et cetera. But the main line of uh, the Python, uh, C Python implementations version control is now on GitHub. Uh, PEP 512, uh, if you're interested, for, has more information on what that process looked like. Uh, There's a ton of work that went into planning that and executing it. Um, along with the migration to GitHub, uh, many of the tools that used to run just like on the version control server for uh, checking things like contributor license agreements or ensuring that uh, a, a patch meets certain criteria were no longer able to be uh, executed just on a server. So we now have some bots. Uh, so now there are now some bots that exist that make C Python development happen. Uh, the Knights Who Say Nee does CLA enforcement or contributor license agreement enforcement um, for Python. Uh, Miss Islington does a backporting of C Python pull requests. And the one I can't say, does anybody know how to say that? Belvedere. What's that? Belvedere. Be Be Belvedere. Bedivere is a bot to identify missing information for C Python pull requests. Um, additionally, uh, the Python Software Foundation is the primary entity behind PyCon, and so the PyCon website, no, no, no surprise, is hosted on the PSF infrastructure. We're going to pause for a second, and I'm going to do my PyCon pitch as the chair. Um, you, if you're interested in, in helping out uh, with, or not helping out, but like giving a talk or a tutorial or a poster or uh, speaking at the Education Summit for PyCon, the deadlines for those are relatively close. Uh, specifically tutorials, uh, which are three three hour or four hour pieces of content that are more classroom oriented, those uh, close on the November 24th. So if you're at all interested in that, you have five days. Um, uh, ask me if, if you have any questions specific about that. Otherwise, talks, posters, education summit, uh, proposals are due by January 3rd. If it's January 3rd anywhere on the planet, you still have time, you can submit those through us.pycon.org. And registration is already open at early bird rates. Uh, PlanetPython.org. This is a hidden gem that not many people are super aware of. It's a feed aggregator, so you can add your blog's feed for your Python stuff to this if you want uh, over at uh, github.com slash python slash planet. But it's a curated feed uh, aggregator, and it's a good way to keep a pulse on like sub-communities and things people are writing and ideas they're having in the community. Um, additionally, uh, the Python Software Foundation is supportive of uh, some other implementations of Python, such as PyPy, Jython, and Iron Python. Um, so if you're not aware, PyPy is written, Py Python written on top of Python. Jython is Python on top of the JVM. Iron Python is Python on top of .NET, I think. Um, so before we get into what sort of makes all of this possible, there is one entity that's sort of ultimately responsible for providing these community resources, and that's the Python Software Foundation. So there's a couple slides on this, and I just want to warn you, I'm going to say the PSF a lot. Um, so so 
that we can all be prepared. But in brief, the PSF, uh, uh, the mission of the PSF is to promote, protect, and advance the Python programming language and support and facilitate that growth to a diverse and international community of Python programmers. Uh, in reality, there's much more going on behind the scenes than that, um, but this is the sort of the, the base brief mission of the, of the organization. Um, so it's a 501c3 nonprofit. Um, it's primarily around from a legal sense to protect the intellectual property of the Python programming language. Um, it also produces its own open source license and ensure and works with the oh, and works with the uh, open source initiative to ensure that that license uh, matches all of their uh, uh, definitions of open source. And additionally, it protects the trademarks and uh, word marks and logos of uh, IP held by the PSF. Um, outside of the lawyery stuff, um, these are the things that most people sort of uh, see in a day to day action, which is managing contributions to Python and Python uh, oriented projects. So, this is like the contributor license agreement, making sure that IP is protect, you know, uh, correctly handled and handed off, et cetera. Um, it solicits and manages these contributions as well. So occasionally there will be a, a point where a project is so large that it might make sense to go find somebody to do it, et cetera. Um, the PSF is a grant-giving nonprofit, which is uh, super interesting in that the, the money that comes in doesn't just sort of uh, sit there or get spent on uh, its own activities. It actively sends grants to conferences like PyTexas, uh, like, like, like Dustin mentioned, to working groups, user groups, et cetera. Um, so fundraising is a huge part of being able to give money away. Um, so that's a, another big activity of the PSF. Um, pu publicity, promotion, and facilitation are, are three big key points. And these are the most ways that people interact with uh, the PSF, whether they realize it or not. Um, mm -hmm. An interesting fact from the publicity standpoint is the only thing in the PSF infrastructure that's actually written into the organization is maintaining a public website. Um, we do much more than that, um, but uh, that's the only one I guess we have to do. Um, so uh, the PSF also support, uh, so again from a PyCon angle, the PSF operates PyCon US and it absorbs the profits or uh, losses of that, of that activity. Um, and that's actually what primarily um, drives the fundraising for the PSF. So if you're not aware, when you go to PyCon, the money you pay uh, ends up more or less going into the Python Software Foundation so that it can be distributed out other, other ways. Um, so it also supports through the grants program, like I mentioned, regional PyCons, user groups and workshops, and development work on the on, on the Py Python itself and other ecosystem stuff. Another interesting benefit it has is it's able to provide fiscal sponsorship for organizations. So if you have a meetup group or a, or a conference and you want to have nonprofit status, as long as it aligns with the PSF mission and you're not going to go spend it on things like running a political campaign, uh, you can absolutely uh, uh, get more information on the fiscal sponsorship so that your organization can accept nonprofit donations and uh, then uh, spend that money on your activities. And it also organizes and manages working groups. So this is the way that a lot of things within the PSF happen. Uh, there's a marketing working group who's, who sort of runs the Twitter and the blogs, et cetera. There's the packaging working group that uh, is, is, is focused on PyPI, PIP, setup tools, et cetera. And then uh, trying to think of another good working group. Oh, the infrastructure working group, which works on the infrastructure. So you might be asking yourself, like, what's behind the curtain of all of those services that we saw before? Um, I have a, a sticker sheet that I'm going to give out if somebody can give me the right answer. So how, how do all of those things happen? Anybody? Python. Python. That's, that's a good answer. So I, I, I'm going to give you a technical, a technical thumbs up there, and you can have a sticker sheet. So come find me after. It is, all, it is primarily powered by Python. Volunteer. It, it is. It, uh, there are uh, volunteers. Anything else goes into the, to it that somebody might know? There are some love. sponsors is a, is a huge part. So there's sponsors, and we got volunteers, um, and the PSF infrastructure working group. Um, so uh, indeed, behind this, behind the curtain of all of that are sponsors. Uh, if you've ever run a website, you know that these things aren't free. Uh, server time isn't free. DNS isn't free. Bandwidth isn't free. Uh, storage isn't free, etc. So most of those services are uh, run on other services that are donated uh, to, the, to the PSF. 
and it's sort of tied together by volunteers. So volunteers who work to get code out there, integrate services, make things happen, uh, who are donating their time primarily. Um, the PSF Infrastructure Working Group is a, is a part of the PSF whose goal is to have some continuity there, so to have a group of people who work together collaboratively on that to drive things forward. Um, but outside of the working group, there are hundreds of volunteers that go on a daily basis that have some impact on this stuff. Um, there's also a part-time uh, employee of the PSF uh, that, that acts as an IT manager whose goal is to sort of um, give an organizational arm of, of the working group uh, into the PSF. So I'm going to run through the same list of slides, all those, all those um, services that we mentioned earlier, but I'm going to talk about the volunteers and the sponsors behind them because I think it's kind of important. So www.python.org, right now there's one volunteer who's primarily driving almost all of uh, the, the changes that are going on there, that's Berker. Um, the sponsors that make this possible are Rackspace, Fastly, and Mailgun. So Rackspace provides server hosting, Fastly provides CDN, and Mailgun gives the emails that go in and out for the service to operate. Um, Docs.python.org, uh, Benjamin Peterson uh, has spent a ton of time uh, setting it up and moving it from uh, the, the old infrastructure into the new stuff. And recently, Julian Pollard has stepped up not only to sort of keep the doc builds happening, but also to push and drive uh, translations. So there's now French and Japanese translations for the docs. Um, if you speak another language, you should totally get in touch with Julian and start thinking about how you might be able to contribute to um, uh, translating those docs into other languages. Um, again, Rackspace and Fastly make the docs possible. PyPI, so this is by far the largest uh, piece of infrastructure we operate on a daily basis. And so from the legacy PyPI, so this is the old one we were talking about earlier, uh, Donald Stuff, Richard Jones, myself, uh, have, have primarily committed like code and, and made infrastructure changes. Jason and Berker have been huge in supporting the issue tracker and uh, following up on those things. Uh, Florian Apollinar uh, has done some I, like uh, sysadmin or IT work. Um, and then in the past, Alex Gaynor and Martin have spent a lot of time on PyPI as well. PyPI.org, which is the upcoming new thing, has three major contributors, Donald Stuff, Nicole Harris, and your own Dustin Ingram. Um, sponsors, again, it's the huge service. It has all sorts of uh, work being done. So it has also the most people uh, sponsored to make it possible. Fastly, Rackspace, Amazon, Heroku, uh, Mailgun and DreamHost. Mail.python.org is completely, like I said, super unsung hero, and there are a huge list of unsung heroes behind it, uh, keeping Mail.python.org sort of humming along. Mark Sapiro, Ralph uh, Patrick, Brad Knowles, Skip Montan Montanero, uh, Barry, Wa Barry Warsaw, and Sean. Sean uh, deserves a special uh, shout out because when the uh, old mail server just blipped out of existence on hardware somewhere in the Netherlands. Uh, Sean had been running backups of that of that host for years, and we were able to restore it uh, in like a weekend, which wasn't easy, but was much more straightforward having a, a recent backup. And uh, DigitalOcean makes mail.python.org possible. We wanted to keep it in uh, the same country so that uh, things would be... Uh, if there were some EU privacy laws or something that people drove for, but DigitalOcean has Amsterdam region, so they were able to step in really quickly and provide us with a place to host it. Um, Wiki.python.org, uh, Mark Andre and the OSU OSL make this possible. OSU OSL is really cool. Um, they're a open source lab out of the Oregon State University that supports. Um, uh, it basically gives you a place, if you're an open source project, you can apply and get a place to run servers, uh, hop into their virtual machine cluster, et cetera. So you should check that out if you're interested. Uh, Bugs.python.org, uh, this is hosted by Hetzner Online and has been for many, many years. Uh, and Magic, Izio, and R. David Murray have spent a ton of time, as well as Mark, the PSF infrastructure manager, uh, trying to get some feeling of like uh, how, to, how to keep this online and moving forward. Um, Buildbot, uh, Zachary Ware, David R. Murray, and, and Anthony, I don't know how to say his last name, unfortunately. I just know him from online um, as BitDancer. No, that's R. David Murray. Anyway, uh, I've spent a ton of time keeping Buildbot online and recently upgrading this beautiful new, new uh, release of it to make everything beautiful again. And again, that runs out of the OSU OSL. And then all the builders, I wasn't able to quickly uh, enumerate all the people that contribute build hosts for it, but there are people who just offer their computer on like to 
the BuildBot server to just run whatever code it wants, which is uh, both uh, amazing and uh, security vulnerability that they trust us with. So, <laughs> um, Python test was set up by Benjamin Peterson and runs completely independent of our infrastructure over on DigitalOcean, which is really nice. It's because we can start doing things like testing FTP access, which we wouldn't really feel confident just giving random hosts to run their tests against an FTP server that uh, was inside of the, the rest of the infrastructure. Uh, svn.python.org is hosted over at one of our longest term sponsors, Access for All. So back sometime in the 90s, um, Access for All offered the PSF, or, the, or I guess just sort of the people who were making Python happen at the time, um, three, yeah, three servers in Iraq, somewhere in a dusty closet. Um, we still have one of them that are still alive. Um, you heard me mention earlier when the mail server disappeared. That was one of these uh, servers sitting uh, that, that had been sitting there for years and years and years at Access for All. Um, SVN is still there. We're working on moving it out since there's no technical or formal agreement for this box, um, and it could die at any time like its, uh, like its siblings. Um, Mercurial is, is over at Rackspace and uh, GitHub. So GitHub supports uh, the PSF by donating all four private repositories that are used. Um, two of them are because we can't legally host like a font publicly. Um, and one has some secrets in it, and the other one, I'm not sure what it was. Uh, but GitHub makes it possible through just donating the open source, uh, you know, general public repositories as well as supporting us with uh, the need for a few private repositories. Um, the bots, there are two volunteers behind the bots, uh, Brett, Can Brett Cannon and Marietta, Marietta um, and all those run on Heroku. So Heroku is really generous to just let us sort of run whatever we want um, for these small, small things. Uh, the PyCon site uh, previously was was supported by a um, a consultancy, and over the last two years, uh, it's actually just sort of ended up that the PyCon chair uh, <laughs> donates their time to to keep it to keep it sort of updated and make changes. Um, sponsors are Rackspace, Fastly, and Mailgun. Um, I'm really excited as chair for PyCon to sort of try to break the cycle of. Uh, the chair spending all of their time uh, working on the website. And so if you have Django and Python skills and are interested in taking part in the uh, newly formed Python Tech Committee, let me, or PyCon Tech Committee, let me know after this, uh, come find me. Um, but yeah, Rackspace, Fastly, and Mailgun. Uh, PlanetPython.org uh, started long ago by Michael Ford, but has been uh, sort of the reins have been taken over by Trey Siever, Tim Golden, and Bruno. Um, and that runs over at Rackspace as well. And overall, there are just some general sponsors that make all of this possible um, and have been longtime sponsors and made sort of the infrastructure bits easier for the team. Uh, Pingdom for uh, checking to make sure things are alive. Rackspace for just providing uh, sort of the bulk of our backend hosting. Uh, status page IO for communicating out to the community when things are going wrong or might be going wrong for longer than anticipated. Um, Sentry for keeping track of errors as they come through the infrastructure in various ways. Uh, Datadog for stats and monitoring. Uh, Dyn for DNS, and DigiCert provides us with uh, uh, some like high-value uh, TLS certificates so that Python.org has that big green box instead of just a little lock icon. Um, I do want to stop briefly and... I'm gonna, we're going to... Uh, so over the last month, www.python.org served about 180 million requests to only 120 terabytes of data. Documentation barely eked that out and did 183 million requests and 5.1 terabytes of data. Um, so props to the Python community for reading documentation slightly more than downloading uh, Python. Um, uh, and as far as astonishing traffic stats go, nothing in the PSM infrastructure holds a candle to PyPI. In just the last month, uh, PyPI did 5.6 billion requests and served 1.1 petabytes of data. 
Um, so keep the 1.1 petabytes of data in your mind and go over and like look at some various CDNs and see how much how expensive it is to serve 1.1 petabytes of data in a month. Um, and you kind of get a feeling for why uh, Fastly has made such an impact on the infrastructure and why it does warrant stopping for just a few seconds and specifically calling them out. So uh, everything's awesome. Like uh, we have everything we need. All the services are online, uh, or, or is it? So go, think back to the scenario we started with at the beginning of the talk, and maybe you're going to uh, install that package. <sighs> that, we don't like that. Uh, maybe you're going to go read the documentation again. Yeah. Or maybe you're going to go get that that latest release of Python, uh, and you know, install it. So everything's uh, bad. So nothing lasts forever. And this is not uh, meant to be at all uh, an angry slide. This is just the realistic nature. So this is an email we got from a sponsor back in October uh, that basically said, hey, you know, we've decided that we're no longer going to be able to support, uh, you know, this, 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 uh, this donation program uh, beginning in, on December 31st, 2017. So we got plenty of notice. Um, you know, it, what, it would have been sort of a, a hassle to get volunteers together quickly to move things, but it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Uh, luckily, about two days later, we got an email that's like, oh, sorry, we screwed up. That was the wrong information. Um, everything's cool. Uh, so, 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 so like, oh, okay. Um, and, uh, and if you want, it's the, we'll set the scene up. It's the infrastructure channel on, uh, on Freenode. About once or twice a quarter, uh, I hop in and say, hey, it looks like blank. Credits may need to be re-upped again, Mark. Uh, and Mark goes and touches base with the, uh, the billing department over there to try to get, get, get an idea of what went on. So uh, many, of these, many of these are not, many of the sponsorships are fragile. Uh, not in any, not in any like, negative way to say this, but you know, sometimes it's somebody in an organization who's going to stop and say, hey, we should really help the PSF out. And so they punch in a code and, like, magically credits show up. Um, or uh, it's sort of done out of goodness, but not necessarily in a formal way. So occasionally these things, you know, they're, they're, they're in flux. And nothing's permanent. It, it's, it's sort of absurd to assume that any one person or any one sponsor would be able to commit forever to, to offering their services, their time, or their money. So sort of the main reason I really wanted to give this talk and sort of get this information out there is to talk a little bit more about sustainability. So yesterday, Travis, in his keynote, mentioned the sustainability of the, of the, you know, the scientific Python community and the ways that they went about making that happen. Um, I think that in a, in, a, in a very similar way, the PSF infrastructure needs to uh, think a little bit more long term. And some steps have been taken. Um, so in February of 2016, the PSF did hire a part-time IT manager, and the goal there is to help bring some continuity, bring that organizational aspect to the team, and manage and retain uh, and sort of build more formal relationships for some of these sponsors that have provided services in the past. Um, and that's been going really well. Um, additionally, in May of 2016, the packaging working group was formed. So this is a working group of the PSF whose primary concerns are uh, keeping PyPI online, uh, improving the, the PIP installer program, uh, keeping setup tools going, et cetera. Um, and I'm really happy to announce that as of Thursday, a $170,000 grant was, uh, to, or to support the completion role of NextGen PyPI was finalized. So there will be more, more details on this soon. Uh, but the Mozilla Open Source Support uh, Grant Program accepted a proposal uh, from the packaging working group into their foundational technology track. Uh, so this is super exciting, and I'm excited to see what it'll do for PyPI. But ultimately, like you know, big influxes of cash here and there aren't aren't something that will sustain and to build um, b build out what we need to to make sure we can do this long term. So we're just going to stop and talk about sustainability a little bit because I think it is. Uh, sort of the, the, the key thing that, I, that I'd love for people to be thinking about and to share their experience with. If we look at the way some other organizations have done this, um, Ruby Gems is very similar. So uh, the Ruby community has their equivalents of PyPI and also all of their own concerns from the infrastructure standpoint. They're structured in a very similar way to the PSF. Um, so whatever we learn or whatever they learn can sort of have uh, a, a positive effect on both. Uh, if you look at NPM, uh, so the, the Node community, has a company built out specifically around their package hosting. 
Um, and so they're able to fund a lot of efforts throughout that, and their language is supported by Joyant. When we look into communities like Go and Rust, uh, there's a organization behind those that are sort of motivating the language in general, and their package managers end up being GitHub. So it's sort of like you know a free a free place to host those things. Uh, PHP recently moved off from like the GitHub based uh, Git repository model for uh, package hosting, which is, tends to be the big thing that every community like struggles with. Um, and have moved to uh, composer hosting that I'm not sure exactly how it's done or who it's funded by. So looking around the ecosystem and trying to determine how other organizations are doing it can be beneficial. But similarly, you know, the Python community is a Python community, and there is a good there is a good reason for us to be thinking internally and building these solutions internally and figuring out how to best serve our community and move forward. Um, aside from that, you know, it just becomes one of those things where. Uh, Volunteer-based work is sort of, sort of difficult to uh, plan and measure and, and execute out, out to the future. So realistically, the sort of call to actions here that I have for you all out of this are um, ideas and discussion. So uh, share your ideas, uh, ask questions, and discuss these, these, these concepts. Uh, talk about it a little bit more in your own, like, in your own uh, your own, your own group of friends or your employer or your user group or at conferences. You can advocate. So you can advocate within your employer or with organizations you have influence with to sort of push them to, to consider ways that they might be able to contribute or uh, work to help sustain uh, uh, this infrastructure, these infrastructure concerns. If you're able, you can consider a one-time or recurring donation to the PSF directly. Uh, so this sort of just goes into the, its overall operating budget. Most of that money will absolutely be used for grants um, for people like uh, the PyLadies, for user groups in, um, in Kenya and Nigeria are like blowing up right now with, uh, with the amount of Python going on there. So most of the grant money is going to go there. Um, if you're specifically worried about PyPI or the package index, you can donate to the packaging working group at donate.pypi.org. And if you're interested in ABLE, um, you can also consider contributing. So if we go back to the, like you know a few slides ago, we can look at uh, the ways that you know you can get more information on the infrastructure and consider donating some of your time for that. Um, so this sort of ends the like structured part of the talk. Um, so I'm just going to really quickly say thank you and throw up my what I'm calling the NASCAR slides. So these are all the logos of uh, the, the the sponsors. Um, and I'm just going to see if you have any questions, and we've, if we can start on that discussion part here and now. Uh, so you mentioned we should go to PyPI before you know, uh, the rent car is still Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's a ticket for it, and um, as I sort of mentioned, the the Moss Grant is going to have mean a lot more active development there. Um, the primary reason for that is, is I'm sorry to repeat the question. The question was, uh, if if you want me to go to PyPI.org, why is there a giant red bar at the top saying that this is not production yet? And the answer is, it just hasn't been removed yet. Um, <laughs> So the question is, is the intent to uh, completely remove pypi.python.org and move all that functionality into pypi.org? And the answer to that is strictly yes. Um, so the pypi.python.org will have to live on as a C name or a redirect basically forever. Um, but yeah, the entire functionality of pypi it will, should end up in, in pypi.python.org by the end of the, the, hopefully before the end of the grant work, so that we can also work to implement, you know, much needed security improvements and other usability issues. I like the fact that you put the names of all the people who want to see this. Um, how much does it circulate? Like, people change their life to go out. How often it happens and how do you find new people to tell us a bit more about that? Sure. So the, the, the statement was uh, really enjoyed seeing the names of the people behind the scenes. And the question was, how often do, the, do those names change? And when those names change, how does it happen? Um, so the answer to that is the names normally change when somebody gets burnt out uh, or their life situation changes to the point where they can't spend as much time volunteering as they previously did. Um, that is the primary reason why those names uh, change. Uh, when they change, uh, there's no formal process for for it. It's it's normally 
A, a really good example, the most recent one, is with uh, docs.python.org. So I mentioned that Benjamin Peterson had done a bunch of work to get uh, the doc build system sort of up and running um, and, and automated. Uh, Julian started, you know, had sort of just pushed a little bit to be like, I really want to push the translation project forward. And so he was in the IRC channel on a regular basis. And eventually I was like, you've changed a bunch of stuff with the doc builds long enough. Have you, you just kind of want to be, <laughs> be be the primary person. So unfortunately, that's generally it. I mean, it's it's somebody who's scratching an itch or wants to see change happen that steps up and, and offers to to get involved. Um, does that sort of is that a good summary of how that? Yeah. So the question was how 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 to how to invite more people in, and um, the best way to get to get sort of uh, disgusting and, and, and involved with the infrastructure components uh, is to. I'm not exactly sure how you join the PSF Slack. Um, if you're interested, you can reach out to me, and uh, I can I can get you an invite. But if you do use uh, Freenode uh, for IRC, there is a channel pound Python hyphen infra, which let me just add. Ooh. There we go. Uh, so you can join Freenode Python Infra um, to just sort of have a discussion. If there's something you know you're interested in getting involved in, uh, most of the questions can be answered there. So the question is what the, so that's the relationship of the PSF with local meetups. Um, so the PSF uh, is, is around, like I said, for the, from a fiscal sponsorship perspective. So if your local meetup wants to take uh, donations that are 501c3, you know, nonprofit, tax deductible, I'm not a tax accountant. Um, but if, if they want to take those donations, they can take those as nonprofit, as deductible donations from, from individuals and use it to spend money on pizza and, and such. Um, if you're holding an event, uh, like a workshop or uh, a kids coder camp or you know some other thing that's outreach based, you can always apply for a grant. Then the PSF will help fund and make those events possible. Um, and yeah, I mean, just like if, if you're run if you're running a meetup, uh, you can pretty easily get the PSF to pay for your, for your uh, meetup.com fees if you're using it. It's like eighty bucks a year, uh, but the PSF like pays that. Yeah. I'm I'm not super clear. I don't quite understand. So I, I mean, the, the the PSF is absolutely around to support and uh, any, anything anything you're doing that aligns with the mission of the PSF. So if you're helping build a more diverse and inclusive uh, Python ecosystem or community, uh, the, the, let the PSF know, and they will do everything they can to help you. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, and uh, really quick, I'm just going to throw up a link for where the slides will be uh, later this afternoon. So if you want slides, they'll be at earnest.ly slash pdf slash pytexas2017.pdf. Any other questions for Ernest? All right, let's give him a really big round of applause.